Hello guys and welcome to set up this May Blutrial layout with me. My name is Anna and today we're gonna walk through this minimal spring inspired theme together. I'll post the final flip through of the previous month on my Instagram in the end of this month and I've also been thinking about posting that on YouTube as a shorts video but I need to figure out how to do that. But anyway, today we're gonna get started with this minimal style painting. I used my trusty gouache paints. They've definitely become my favorite medium at the moment. I've really been enjoying exploring different styles with them. The paper is my basic Canson gold pressed watercolor paper. And then I'm gonna use some different size brushes, which are also nothing special. So yeah, after attaching the paper to my brown kitchen board here, I'm gonna start with some light pencil guidelines that will help to get all the shapes in this picture very even. So I definitely wanted this monthly theme to be a little bit more minimal. I realized I've done pretty intense themes in the past few months and sometimes I honestly feel a little bit bad about that. Like I totally get that most of you probably don't have that much time to set up your bullet journals. So I've really been thinking about that balance and it's something I also try to improve moving forward. I don't want my themes to be difficult or time consuming to the point that you don't want to even try. But of course, at the same time, I still want to show you different ways to explore your creativity with your journals. But in the end of the day, creating a beautiful theme doesn't mean we need to spend a crazy amount of time on it. But yeah, sorry for rambling about that. As you can see, I started the painting part here from the background. This was one of those times that I kind of went over some of these colors later when I was progressing with this whole painting. My goal was to keep the color theme more spring-like this month. So I definitely wanted to use some different tones of yellow and combine that with some light green and teal tones. But I feel like a lot of these more bohemian style pictures are more in that orangey, earthy, fall tone category, and I kind of wanted to avoid that a little bit. So I think it would be very beneficial to create some color swatches beforehand, especially if you need to mix the colors you're using. And sometimes I even go as far as to sketch some different color options on my iPad before I start on paper. But this time I didn't do any of that, which is why I was probably struggling with the colors so much. I think they turned out a little bit too dark and orangey brown in the beginning. And it just wasn't the look I was going for this time. So you'll see me painting over everything a few times here. So this time I tried to use my gouache paints in this very thick way. You can really thin them out with water and get a lot more watercolor-like finish as well. But when you use a little bit less water, you can also get this almost acrylic paint effect with them. So I wanted all the shapes in this picture to be very defined. But it can sometimes be a little bit hard to create those clean straight edges with free hand. So some tips I figured on the way was working very slowly definitely helped. And I also tried to load my brush with paint, especially around the edges, so that I didn't need to go over those areas many times. But yeah, this painting was definitely a lot more about the shapes and colors rather than some final details or realistic shading. I think that was definitely the theme around this whole monthly setup. And it was honestly very refreshing and kind of different style from what I'm used to. A painting like this is also fairly quick to create, at least if you don't end up changing every color about 10 times. But with gouache, you also need to take some time to let the first layers dry, especially when you want to paint something on top. So the last thing in this picture were these simple plants. So I was kind of following with this whole minimal aesthetic and combining these different elements together.
But then I finished everything off with these few white sparkles or whatever you want to call these. I think they just add this very cute look to many different paintings. And as always, this theme and painting will be available on my online shop. It's already up there when this video is going live, so definitely check it out if you're interested. The link to the shop is in the description. But now that the painting was done, I used my double-sided tape to attach this thing to my notebook. And after that, I moved on to the page next to this one. I wanted to go with this super minimal font this month. I guess this is called a monoline technique where the whole font is in the same thickness. I'm not completely sure about that though. But anyway, then under the title, I just wrote out a small monthly calendar that we can use later. And that's it for our first cover spread. I was super happy about the whole style and vibe of the painting and thought it gave a good starting point for the rest of our theme. Before we move on to this bright and fun monthly overview spread though, let's take a quick moment to thank this month's sponsor who is Morning Brew. Morning Crew is a free daily newsletter that you get from Monday to Sunday. They target all kinds of news about business, finance and the tech world. I'm personally someone who doesn't really read traditional news. I honestly think they are pretty dry and often a bit too much. I'm sure many of you can relate to that. So what I love about this newsletter is that it's written in a super fun, witty way and all the news feel very relevant. So for any of you wanting to get up to speed with your business news in a new fun way, Morning Brew is a great way to start your mornings. I used to scroll to Instagram, but this feels much more productive and only takes about five minutes. For example, this week I learned that there's a Lord of the Rings TV series coming that cost over four times more to produce than Game of Thrones. I've never been this excited in my life. <laughs> so if you or someone you know are interested in business, finance or tech news, there's really no reason not to subscribe. It's completely free and takes less than 15 seconds to do. And you can do that by clicking the link in the description below to subscribe today. Again, thank you so much for them for supporting my channel. But now let's dive into this monthly layout. So I started by setting up this floating style calendar on the first page. I mentioned last month that I haven't really been using a monthly calendar that much. So I kept this one pretty small as well. I got so many good ideas from you though of how to use these better, like marking birthdays, holidays, some overall project timelines and so on, on top of the basic events and appointments that you usually write here. One good idea is also to track your plant watering days on these monthly calendars. But anyways, I decided to go with this fun drop shadow like style here. I thought this was the perfect way to bring a bit more color to these pages. And I ended up using some of these Archer and Olive Acrylocraft pens in this theme again. But you could do the same thing with any brush pens or even paints if you don't happen to own these pens. But now that the simple calendar is done, I wanted to create some plant doodles here in the top corner. I was thinking about adding something to the background as well, which is why I actually drew this thing on a white sticker paper instead of directly drawing it into the notebook. But then I didn't end up drawing anything to the background. Well, I think for many of you who are maybe worried about drawing directly into the notebook, this is actually a very good alternative. Anyway, I started by sketching some of these Monstera leaves, trying to create some different sizes and face the leaves in opposite directions too. These leaves have a very distinct shape with these larger gaps in the leaves. So don't be afraid to create some bigger ones here and there and also switch things up. But then after spending a good time with these sketches, I just started to follow the outlines I created with the same Acrylocraft pens. I think these pens are perfect for minimal style drawings like these because they create this very opaque, even layer. I was first about to leave the center of these leaves blank, but then eventually decided to color some of these fully. 
I wanted to add some color variation too here so I colored a few of these leaves with this darker cream pen and then added back some of those details that got covered with a white pen. Then lastly, I added some color to this flower pot as well, and then cut out this whole thing, leaving a small white margin around it. I think in the end, drawing this on a different paper also hit the dots from the background. I think sometimes the dots are a little bit distracting when you're drawing something directly to the notebook. But then the last thing that was missing from this page was another minimal cursive May title. Then on the second page, I started with a colorful title background. I thought I would continue with the drop shadow effect. So after coloring this mustard yellow box here, I added some of that same dark green we used behind it. So I'll use this page for my content calendar on May, but if you don't have use for that, I think this would be perfect place for a monthly food log, maybe for your important days, a master to-do list or something like that. And for my fellow content creators, I like to add these F, E and P rows, which stand for filmed, edited and posted. So I can easily use this to check where I'm going with my monthly pictures and videos I'm about to post somewhere. I've been thinking about starting on TikTok as well. Are you guys in there? Oh my god, I feel so old for still not really understanding TikTok, but I think it could be a fun place to create some extra short videos, I guess. But yeah, before I start to ramble about that too much, let's flip to our next spread, which will be for the monthly planning. So here I started with a similar colorful title. I actually think that simple colorful decorations like these are super useful if you don't have that much time to draw much. This is actually how I started my first journal back in the day. I always just chose one brush pen color for the month and used it for some titles and boxes. And I still think that's a really good way to get used to a blood journal. There's really no need to stress yourself with too many decorations or spreads in the beginning, if that doesn't feel like your thing. But after this title was done, I usually write something about my monthly focus, but this time I actually did it a little bit differently. So I kind of divided the monthly focus on these three different categories. The first one will be what I will prioritize this month. The second one is the if I have time category. And then the last one is for things that are maybe important, but not necessary right now. So those can be moved on to the next month. I really hope this categorizing thing will also help you to focus better and really bring up the most important things for you. Then I moved to the bottom of this page and here I set these boxes that will be for the weekly overview planning. I'll add two more boxes also to the next page, so we'll have four of these in total. And these are just something I like to use in the beginning part of the month to kind of structure the whole month a little bit and make sure I have enough time to realistically get everything done I want. I feel like very often it helps to tie any kinds of goals to actual time brackets. At least for me, if I just keep everything in more of that overview, abstract realm, it might be very difficult to predict how much you can actually take on your plate. But yeah, I used the same drop shadow style on these boxes and after setting up all four of them, I actually moved on to the top part of the second page here. I actually got a lot of inspiration this month from Caitlin's Corner here on YouTube. She has such a beautiful, minimal blood journaling style and I had to mention her because I'm pretty sure I stole this section from one of her themes. Anyway, so this will just be kind of a running list of things to update. And at least for me, this doesn't necessarily need to be all done in May. But I would consider these more as stuff to keep in mind to do in some point moving forward. 
But after that, it's time for another minimal decoration here. So I started by just creating this light gray shape here with my brush pen. I thought this was a good starting point because I was kind of going for this abstract shape combination here. So I took the same approach I did earlier and drew another plant doodle on this white sticker paper. This time I wanted to go for some banana leaves, or at least that's what I'm guessing these are. So I created a quick pencil sketch again before drawing everything on top with the green pen. I personally think that sketching everything out with a pencil always gives you more room to play with the shapes and sizes and maybe fix some small things before you fully dedicate to the shape you want. But of course you could speed up this part by just bravely going in with the colorful pen from the start. This time I decided to actually give the color only on the outlines and leave the inside of these leaves totally white. And then again, I just cut out this whole thing, leaving the small white border. But before attaching anything here, I also painted this quick bright orange circle here that I also added to this whole combination to add that abstract vibe. But yeah, in all its simplicity, I really liked how this spread turned out for some reason. I ended up loving these bright colors and minimal decorations together. I thought it looked super springy or even summery a little bit. But anyway, now that we are done here, let's just flip to the next page. So next on this monthly setup, I decided to have a page that I've done a few times in the past. But before talking about that more, let's create this pattern design to the middle first. I knew I definitely wanted to add some minimal pattern to this theme. And I started this whole thing by adding a layer of wash to the whole background. Uh, this layer doesn't have to be that smooth, many imperfections will kind of blend to the background after we add all the details on top. And I wanted to go with this very neutral color, this is kind of similar to what we used in the cover page painting. And if you're wondering what tape I'm using, I actually like to use washi tapes to secure these areas whenever I'm working directly on my notebook. The glue in these washi tapes is not as strong as in a normal painter's tape, for example, so it usually doesn't rip the notebook paper that easily. It still happens sometimes though. You can actually see I kind of ripped my page a little bit, but gladly it was just on the white area and not on this pattern. <laughs> Ripping the pattern would have been devastating. But anyway, after the background layer here was completely dried, you can start to work with some pins or paints on top of it. So I kind of went with these fan-like shapes. I don't really know how to describe this honestly, but you can see what I'm doing here. And if you're wondering, I actually had to keep switching the white pen I was using here because mine just kept dying on me one after another. I don't know if I'm the only one this happens to. I feel like my white pens are always dying. I've yet to find the perfect one that never dries out or never skips, never smudges. Well, maybe someday. But yeah, the size of one of these shapes here is four times four dot rows. And then you can just basically repeat the same thing over and over again until you've covered this whole thing. So now that we have this scale pattern looking thing here, I started to add some more details in here. You could go with even more of them or use more colors, but I kind of like the minimal look here. So I just went with this orange and added some more white lines. And then as the very last step, you'll see me adding a gray line under the white half circle shapes. And I thought especially that step made this pattern a little bit more dimensional. But yeah, now that we have this pretty decoration here in the middle, I started to set up the rest of this page. So this whole thing will be a weekly memories or kind of weekly diary type of spread. So every week I have some space here to write about the highlights of that week and then these empty rectangular boxes will just be an opportunity for me to draw something simple here every week. 
and don't worry if you don't find the time you can totally cheat and decorate these boxes with your favorite stickers or washi tapes that's probably what I'm gonna end up doing honestly but at least we give ourselves the opportunity to draw something simple I know these types of pages always look a little bit empty in the beginning, but it will hopefully be much fuller in the end of this month. But anyway, now it's time to move on again, and now we can start to set up the first weekly layout for this month. So I actually tried out something a little bit different with the weekly layout this time. I actually got this whole idea from Amanda Rach Lee and how I've seen her setting up her whole weekly systems. So basically, instead of using the typical daily to-do lists, I'll instead create a whole weekly task list. We will set that on the second page, but here I just still wanted to leave this little space for each day, just in case there are some events or appointments I need to remember. I kind of followed this same drop shadow effect here, and then I personally always need some space for daily meal planning, so the L's and D's here stand for lunch and dinner. But yeah, now let's move on to the actual weekly task list here on the second page. So after writing out the title and drawing this big box here, I will just basically leave this as a long list of different tasks that need to get done in some point of the week. And this is just because I've recently felt like I move my daily tasks around quite a lot. So maybe this could be a better way to approach the whole thing. So instead of tying every task to a certain day, you can just kind of have this list here and just make sure you get all of them done in some point. I thought I would still mark the weekdays here, so I can still mark down on which day I did a certain task. And I also might need to figure out some way to mark whenever the task is completely done, in case there's something I'll work on for multiple days. But anyway, I'm kind of excited about this whole new method. And you know, if this doesn't work, you can always just change back to the old system for the last weeks of this month. But I personally like to give all these kinds of new methods at least a chance. Anyway, I kind of continued this same box to the bottom of this page, where I set this separate space for the weekly happy tracker. But otherwise, this is pretty much it for my weekly setup. These spreads always get super full and messy, so I think it's just a good thing that it looks a little bit empty for now. However, now we still have our last spread to set up. So here I just flipped over the next three pages. I'll use the rest of the weeks in May. And then on this last page here, I will set up the monthly review spread. But I actually started this one with another minimal gouache painting. I kind of felt like we needed something to tie together with the cover page painting. So my idea here was to kind of create something similar. So I started to paint this first directly onto the notebook here, but then I actually did end up liking the colors I was using here. I even tried to change them up a little bit, but then I was also starting to get annoyed by the dots that were showing through. I think the dots are a little bit distracting, especially if you are trying to create a very minimal look. So then I just completely gave up on this one and painted this whole thing again on a separate paper. I think this is also a very sneaky way to hide any ruined paintings. Just paint something again on a separate paper and glue it on top. <laughs> But anyway, I kind of went with these similar mountain shapes here. And I also wanted to use some blue in this one because I didn't end up using any blue in this whole theme after the cover page. But otherwise, I went with some very simple shapes. And then because I felt this one needed just something a little bit more interesting, I decided to add these white lines to the bottom blue part here. But after this whole thing had tried, I just cut out the circle shape from the paper and attached it to my notebook. And then I just decided to throw in these palm leaves here, which I kinda regretted to be honest. I don't know why, but this cream pen was really dry in this point already. So the pen wasn't working that well, and also I was kinda running out of time and patience in this point. 
So now looking back to this footage later, I think I could have definitely spent some more time on these leaves. But anyway, after I have managed to create something on this corner here, I just moved on to set the rest of this whole spread. So on these review pages, the idea is to just kind of combine your thoughts and reflect on the previous month. So one of my favorite things to add here is this what's on your mind question, because that gives a very open opportunity to just write about anything that happens to be on your mind that moment. Then on this first page here, I wanted to just list some things about this month. So for example, what I learned, what I discovered, what were my favorite songs and that kind of stuff. You can of course change this up and maybe add something that you would like to remind yourself later when you're looking back to these pages. But then I jumped back to the other page again and set this last little corner here. So the scale thing is something I do every month on these review pages. So here the center line is basically the zero point and then I will review the whole previous month on these five different categories. But then as the very last thing, I just added these two simple boxes here. The first one is the do more of these category and the other one is for the things that I should do less. But yeah, that's finally it for this whole May layout. I really hope you guys like this more minimal abstract style. Also about what I said in the beginning, I would love to hear your feedback about the difficulty level. It's sometimes a little bit difficult to judge your own work and know if you guys would prefer to see something super advanced and difficult or something a little bit easier and less time consuming. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments. But anyway, as always, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If this was your first one from this channel, definitely consider subscribing. But yeah, that's it for this time. I hope you guys are having an amazing day or night wherever you are. And see you in my next one. Bye bye.